Not a military ceremony in London would be complete without the guards. Honoured traditions surround those bearskins, and tradition also surrounds the making of the bearskins themselves. Selecting the furs imported from the Arctic, we meet Alfred Powell, who has been at it for 30 years. To a guardsman, the sheen on his bare skin ranks level with the shine on his boots. Each hair on the skin must be of the same length. There must be no dead hair or faults. Varying degrees of blackness are positively out of bounds. And when you consider that there are at least a dozen shades of blackness, that's not so easy as it sounds. That piece of skin has been rejected because it was out of line with the nose and tail. The nose and tail line is the clue to the skin's centre, and the finished cap would be out of balance if the templates were placed without regard to this. So with hands which the years have made cunning, the skin is parted along the lines he's cut. Whether each piece bears a number we can't say, but maybe the army attends to that. Matched in colour and texture, the skins are now passed over to a former leather cutter, 22-year-old Desmond Green. Each piece has to be stitched by hand, and not a seam must show. Like the recruit who will wear it, the bear skin is now turned inside out. At this stage it's wetted, but that's something we'll skip. We'll let Alf take over again for a space to stretch it into shape on the block. Kate Ellis comes into the picture now, her job to fit the wicker shape and lining. She's been lining up bear skins for 16 years, and it's said that her critical gaze shakes the guard whenever she passes the barracks. Cut and sewn and moulded and combed, one more bear skin is ready to join the ranks. And now Alf's last task is to lick their lines into shape. For the output of 10 days hard work at the factory, already bears the stamp of a full platoon of the guard. 